Indigenous Peoples Day. Will you make an effort, spend five minutes to know something about them? In many ways, we stand upon everything that they have done. The very energy and the tremendous power that these rock structures exude would leave you in some way transformed. Bad director of your own drama. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm just very honored and to speak to this amazing man, Sad Guru. Ladies and gentlemen, Sad Guru. Ah, Paul. Nala very good. Paul, what a fire. You pretty conjures it on him, eh? Petrol, what a man. Uh, from our generation, who has not heard about Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid? This is America's fascination with outlaws and bank robbers. American people liked adventure and success, even if it was on the other side of the law. <laughs> so sweet. But we are here at Butch Cassidy's home. Can you beat this? this In the legend, it is believed that certain energies which would show themselves uh, in human forms and uh, create certain kind of negative acts were cursed to become rocks or they, they were turned into stone. Not actually human beings, but those who were taking human forms to cause certain amount of uh, disturbance or evil to people were turned into stones. That is the legend, that's the belief. But uh, they're almost like frozen people, the way it looks. Look at those structures, how they are, it's almost like uh, you can see any number of Indian temples which are structured just about like this, maybe little more wider base because we want to use the space inside. But uh, in terms of fundamental design, it's almost like they copied from this or they realized it's this form which stands forever. 
the geometry of it. Bryce Canyon, what a miracle, huh? <laughs> entering the Zion National Park. Oh, this is a completely different kind of formation than what we have seen till now. Unbelievable terrain, I've never seen anything like this <laughs> almost like shaved by somebody, you know, like chiseled and shaved. Whoa! We're going through a tunnel, pretty long, totally dark inside except for the headlamps. I don't know exactly how long it is but after this bend, I thought I'll see light at the end of the tunnel, but there's no such thing, it's going further. And it's going down, deeper, oh, it's more than a mile, I think. <laughs> Unbelievable. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> you wouldn't believe this, oh my god, you wouldn't believe this. This is a must-see for everybody, this is unbelievable, unbelievable means unbelievable. I've seen all kinds of terrain on this planet but never ever imagined anything like this. Look at this one. There's some which look like, uh, been cut like a burpi or a pizza <laughs> like that, they've been cut as if by human hand. Rocks and rocks confounds me <laughs> This geometric symphony just confounds me. Just following that crack, hmm? Mm. Unbelievable. These are… Uh, these tremendous structures of nature for millennia has been an inspiration for the Navajo and in later days a Hopi. If you're in this valley, even now I'm saying, if you stay in this valley for a few weeks all by yourself, the very energy and the tremendous power that these rock structures exude would leave you in some way transformed. Who can avoid? In some way, thinking beyond, the limitations of this puny body when you are here all by yourself. Thanks to everybody who is managing and maintaining this place in as much pristine 
condition as it's possible for today's world. Welcome to all of you, wherever you are. Here we are in Los Angeles. Well, uh, Pacific time, 5.30 in the morning. Wonderful to see a tennis court full of people. Well, as you know, we've been traveling to various parts of America, particularly touching all the Native American cultural centers and reservations, but unfortunately, most reservations are, are under some kind of lockdown because that population is quite badly affected by the virus. And most of the elders in the tribes or in the nations are over in their late seventies or eighties. So meeting them has been a challenge. So even there we are going on Zoom calls and Google Hangouts and not really physically meeting them, it's unfortunate though we are going to those places, we are not able to meet most people that we should have met. Tomorrow happens to be uh, Indigenous People's Day in the United States. And all of you, wherever you may be, not necessarily in the United States, make this little effort to know something about them, all right? Don't go by the versions that you saw in the Wild West movies. Make some effort about some Native American nation or some indigenous people, either in America or anywhere else. Will you make an effort, spend five minutes to know something about them? Because it's very important how they lived. Because without the basis of people who lived here before us, we would not have existed, isn't it? In many ways, we stand upon everything that they have done. So in that context, five minutes every day, everybody, on this day, once a year, just spend five minutes to get to know those people who are no more. Namaskar. Thank you very much. Without further ado, um, I just want to say thank you all. Within 72 hours, we were able to pull off this gathering of incredible influencers, incredible power players, people who are really on the path. And uh, it's really, a, it's really a privilege to have Sagu here with us today. So. Can't give you a present. Don't do that. <laughs> you see this? You see this guy? Very famous. This was Steve McQueen's best friend, and he had a motorcycle shop. He's my friend. He's my one of my favorite actors. This was his best friend. Okay. Bud Eakins. Do you remember the movie The Great Escape? Yes, yes, of course. Remember the I motorcycle know, over yeah. the fence? He got tangled up in the, the, the barbed wire. Okay, this was Bud Eakins. Oh, so he this, rode, he rode it. He, he was a stuntman, oh, okay. but he had a motorcycle shop here. Mm -hmm. And I was a kid, I used to grow up in the motorcycle shop. This is an original t-shirt. Yeah. 
from Buddy Dude. So, you want to take it off? <laughs> wow. You have to wear it though. You have wow. to wear it. <laughs> wow, isn't that awesome? Way to go. Can you wear it? Yes, I will. Way to go. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to give me the jacket also on right like this. <laughs> I'm so excited. Thank you so much for being here. And I have a few questions to I've ask. Got them. You. Every... So I want to jump right in. As we, as we close out the uh, Indigenous Day, we wanted to have an Indigenous conversation, Indian to Indian, in, in somewhat of a capacity. And we'll explain that as it unpacks. But first up, I got to bring my brother on, on here six-time Grammy Award winner, multi-platinum, super accolades all over. I'd like to welcome Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas. Oh, what's up relatives and all the people that are uh, tuned in to this amazing experience. First of all, I wanna take time to thank Seth Guru and his team for making this possible. Marcus, MC1, thank you for, for moderating and being part of this. You know, it's, uh, it's been a blessing to be able to be a voice to indigenous communities, um, you know, I am Shoshone, Hopi, and Mexican on my grandfather's side, but I've always been an advocate. And now to be able to, to speak on Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, I'm just very honored. And to speak to this amazing man, Set Guru, who's been on an amazing journey to learn about Native culture, um, I want to say thank you again. I appreciate that. And speaking of the land that you were just at, uh, I've been to Bear Butte, I've tied tobacco the trees. I've spent time there and I know uh, personally the power. If you wouldn't mind uh, expressing a little bit about what that time was like for you uh, in those sacred spaces. Oh, I have too much to say about this. To make it brief, I will stick to one point. Mato Tipila, in my experience, in the entire North American continent, at least in United States and Canada, I would say, is probably the one most powerful space that you can see in this part of the world. I, w I was there on uh, the full moon night in uh, Mato Tipila. It was explosive dimension of Vishuddhi or the throat center. Anybody who has done any kind of uh, a little bit of search in with that energy around would naturally become an exploration of mysticism is very natural. Uh, Tab, you are a singer, you must spend minimum three days at this Mato Tipila, especially on the full moon night, I'm telling you, you will realize something, something tremendously powerful. Anybody who realizes or opens up the throat center, their ability to connect with life. I'm saying when I say connect with life, you can touch beyond your physical reach, literally touch. This Mato Tipila is a must for every indigenous person, it's a must. Whether they go there physically or otherwise, they must connect with this. This is where the power is. The basis of your culture in some way energetically is here. And with connecting with that could also be the liberation for the future. Love you guys. Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. That's a statistical fact. This could be one of the most impactful, impulsive episodes we've ever had with one of the most special guests we've ever had. Ladies and gentlemen, Sadhguru. My, my, I guess my question is, who am I, right? How do you know? Is that a shortcoming of humanity? Mind-altering drugs. What happens when you die? What goes to heaven? Your soul? How do you know you found the one? The right partner. The right partner in life. So, Guru, thank you for blessing us with your wisdom today. Can we get a round of applause? Woo! My maid, Maria, found out you were coming. She I saw her standing behind the van and shooting me. She, she was sweating. <laughs> I said, Maria, why are you sweating? She said, I love this guy. I follow all of his stuff. And she's, it's, I think she's here somewhere. We're here tonight. Sadhguru is in town. 
I've been following him for a while. He wrote a wonderful book called Inner Engineering. I wanted my family to meet spiritual people, to start interacting with people who are not hooked on the material world. I'm in my feelings now. <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready to be enlightened. Can't believe he's crossing America on a motorcycle. Oh, motorcycle. That's so cool. Welcome, welcome. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to, to enjoy this time with you. In, in any area of life, those who are most successful are always the most miserable people because they thought they got to the top of the world. And the top of the world doesn't feel like top of the world. What happened yesterday, they're suffering today. Are you suffering life or your memory? You're just suffering your memory. What may happen day after tomorrow, you already suffer. You're suffering your imagination. A vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination. Mm -hmm. This is what makes us who we are, isn't it? Still and wait for din to settle and silence to blossom. When I sing that song, will you be or busy? Sadhguru. Yeah. <laughs> you be <laughs> You're suffering your perception of all of those things. You're suffering you're a, how you you're think. You're a bad of director of your own drama. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. You stay wonderful. You never give up that your wonderfulness. Do not surrender your wonderfulness no matter who the hell does what. Yes. Let them do whatever. Mm -hmm. Lights are on. Uh, Sai Guru is now entering beast mode. He's sliding into big end beast mode. Uh, right now, he's got to watch out. Don't crash. Do not fall. Do not break anything. The world awaits. Uh, Sai Guru's next move. And ladies and gentlemen, he's off. And he's gone. Sai Guru, ladies and gentlemen. Sai Guru. Sai Guru. We are here just entering Mojave Desert. Here is this wonderful Joshua tree as it is called today. It was uh, very important for the Native Americans to make baskets, also get some nutrition out of it. <laughs> 